Hi, I'm Jim Murphy with River City Software Development. Today we're going to be talking about configuring Windows authentication with IronSpeed Designer. We'll assume that you've already used the application security wizard before and understand the basics of how it works. If not, please watch the application security wizard video first. Now, before we get started, it's important to distinguish between two terms, authentication and authorization. Authentication is used to confirm, validate, or substantiate a user's identity. So basically ensuring the user is really who they say they are. Authorization is permission or power granted to perform a specific action. Basically, this is setting permissions. A user may have authenticated themselves to your application by providing their username and password, but that does not mean that they are authorized to do everything within the application. So it's important to differentiate the two terms to avoid confusion as we work with application security. So let's get started. To get started, we'll briefly review the database schema. There is a user's table, a user's role table, and a role table. It's pretty straightforward. Two things to point out. There's a password field here, and it is required by the role-based security wizard, even though Windows authentication is not going to be using that field. Also, for the username field, the value needs to match the same name as the user signs into their workstation not including their domain name. We also need to configure our environment correctly so that Windows authentication works with IronSpeed Designer. The first step is to ensure that IronSpeed Designer is set to use Microsoft IIS, not the development server. The second piece to this is to run Internet Information Services and then select the virtual application that we're using and go to the authentication details. Usually by default you'll find that anonymous authentication is enabled and Windows authentication is disabled. It's important to enable Windows authentication so that the system can receive the network username. It's also important to disable anonymous authentication. If this still remains enabled then it's not going to send the Windows username. Now we'll run the application security wizard. We want to select Windows for the authentication. We also want to select the database roles table for our authorization. We need to select the users table so that the username from that row is going to match the Windows username so that the user can be authorized in the system. Next I'll select the users role information. Now to authorize. I don't want to have any public pages so I'm going to select every single page and ensure they're a signed in user. Also, I want to select each of the add pages and ensure the user is an administrator in order to perform any add features. That's it. Now to test our application. You can see that as I'm signed in as Jim Murphy, who is an administrator, I'm able to click the add button and you can see the add page renders successfully. Now we'll change Jim Murphy's role. Jim Murphy's user number one. We'll make him a manager, role number two. User number one, role number two. Now Jim Murphy's a manager. Let's re-authenticate. Sign on as Jim Murphy again. And you can see this time, as a manager, I'm properly forbidden. When using Windows authentication, it helps to use Internet Explorer. Firefox tends to prompt the user for their username and password if IIS is configured to use Windows authentication. So as you saw, configuring security in IronSpeed Designer is easy and powerful. For more information, please refer to the resources available on the web. Thanks for watching.